Mexican food capital of the world. They will come yeah. down here. <laughs> oh, do we want more chairs? There's some tucked in. You guys can sit on anything. Sit on the floor <laughs> if you want. <laughs> you want to go get a chair? Go get a chair. There's a chair here. There's a <laughs> chair over there. there. I'm just going to make sure nobody's trying to get in. Also, if you want to just sit down, I know sitting on the floor might not be great. It could be kind of fun. But you could sit on the floor down here. I'm going to sit on the counter. You got the counter, it's probably good. Let's put this thing on, make sure it's working. <coughs> all right. So I want to thank you guys all for uh, coming in here, right? Brief presentation on the Last Supper Museum. You're going to hear a little bit of some context of the Last Supper Museum. Uh, hear a little bit about Eric and Nikki and their scholarship program that they're starting this year. So this is a really great opportunity to um, pay for some of your classes, right? Scholarships are fantastic opportunities, and this is a great. Uh, I talk to my classes. I give you guys problems throughout the semester. This is a great problem-solving um, assignment, if you will. So, Eric, uh, without further ado, Thank go you. ahead. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> All right, my name's Eric Braverman. Everybody calls me E.B., my friends. Hopefully, we'll be friends. You can call me E.B. This is T. She helps uh, do a lot of things, basically general manager for us. This is Nikki, who is a graduate here of the college and cares about art a lot and people in town put us together months ago saying you guys should work on projects together and here is one of our starts. <clears throat> a little bit about myself, I like art a lot. I actually studied under Ed Paschke, the greatest artist Chicago ever produced, period. And the story when he died, it said that on the front of their Chicago Tribune, you might want to look up Ed Paschke. I would have him here working with us but uh, he died about 15 years ago on Thanksgiving morning. The greatest lesson he ever taught me was when your art teacher tells you not to do something, run home and do just that. That's like that one. <laughs> so I've worked with Universal Studios making videos. I've worked with bands all over the world. I worked with the caving for the United States Forest Service. No joke here, under the Forest Service, my boss was Mr. Trout. 
I learned about this area coming down here, which I call the Disneyland of the, unit of the wilderness. Uh, even changed the locks on Crystal Cave and, and Portal. So I'm kind of all over the place with projects. And if you get enough education, you don't have to go get a job. You can do things like work on caves and zoos and art and with rock bands. One rock band you might have heard, heard of that I've dealt with a lot is Metallica, the best man at one of their weddings and taught them a lot of lessons. So how did I get into the Last Supper as a piece of art in 1972? I went to Madame Tussauds' Seven Magic Worlds in Phoenix, Arizona, across the street from the Phoenix Zoo. I like wax museums. I've been in 50 states working in more than 40 countries. I was trying to stop at the wax museum. That was the most hideous wax museum I'd ever seen. Inside it, it had a cabin with Indians scalping the pioneers in front of their children, naked Cleopatra, taxidermy lions tearing the throats out of the Christians, those were the happy scenes. And in one corner you went around and there was a big room with the Last Supper in it. And in those days, there was no digital activity, no computers, cell phones, etc. But they had an interactive display. You pushed a big red button and a beam came down. It would come down, Judas, tell this little story. Or Thomas. By the way, this is not a religious thing. If you think I'm some religious guy with a religious thing, we'll get to how this messed me up here in a second. <laughs> the beam came down <clears throat> and it explained each one at a time with a voiceover. James the Lesser. He told you until it got to Jesus. Then it all went black and thunder and lightning came and there was a double light exposure and behind the scrim was the most hideous crucifix of all time that I had ever seen. Bloody eyes bulging, the thorns actually in the head. And my father was a Jewish guy, and my mother was Roman Catholic. So I look at this and say, why is there a picture of a bunch of old Jewish guys together, but all the Christians and Catholics want this picture up in their house? <laughs> so a lot of other kids would collect baseball cards. As I went around traveling across the country with my parents as a kid, and through school I started collecting Last Supper and now have the largest Last Supper collection in the world. I got everything. I got Legos, I got dogs, I got cats. <laughs> Name it. All right? So, yeah, you guys know that's easy. Yep. Yeah. That me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a little bit about me is uh, I graduated here 2020. I didn't get to walk because you guys know the pandemic kind of made everything shut down. But uh, through the pandemic, doing nothing, I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I started a program called ArtReach. Not sure if you guys have seen it on Facebook and all, but we do um, at least like bi-monthly contests where we give people supplies so that we can like teach them how to use them. And it's like super free for them to do whatever they want. They just got to take a picture and send it back, COVID friendly. Um, and then I think it was October, I met EB, and we've just been on this cookie journey. And it's a pleasure to be here for you guys. So hopefully we get some of your submissions, and it'll be really cool to experience. Say hi real quick to the camera, because I can't hi. see you. Thank you. <laughs> and one last okay. thing to say about myself <laughs> is I also work for an organization under the United States Air Force called Jason Society. I brought you all a sticker. Pass those to each other. Cool sticker for your Xbox and your computer, your bike. And what Jason Society did, I did it for 30 years, was if there is a ghost, if there's an alien, if there's a devil, if there's an angel, or a psychic, which there are none, they will be in our planes. Why would we put a young person in a plane if there's aliens and ghosts that go in a plane? I know you like that. All right, quick rules about this. Whatever you want to submit as a piece of art to the Last Supper in this competition, and please do and encourage any artists or friends to do so. Any medium, any size, just has to be submitted by the due date, which is March 9th. March 31st. March 31st, sorry. Well, that's my mind for a minute. March 31st. That will become a permanent part of this collection. It will be like on our website. I'm going to hand out a business card that has the website on it, lastsuppermuseum.com. <clears throat> so people will see 
your art and then build our collection. We have a building in downtown Douglas we're working on, but as people know about the buildings on G Avenue in Douglas, it's like a bombed out building, it probably take me two years to build into for the permanent museum, but I believe I have good spaces and might even just partner up with Art Car World, uh, which is probably our greatest piece of art in Cochise County, or art display it is in Cochise County. How many people have not been to Art Car World? Not been to Art Car World? Make sure you head down there this weekend. It's a simple donation. You give them a dollar, they'll show it to you. And it's a weird thing that I discovered on National Geographic Channel years ago. And we'll get to who that person is more in a minute. Um, but there, that's all the rules are. Any medium, any size, hand it in by the 31st. We're going to have our advisory board judge these things. Uh, when they're judged, the winner will get $500 in cash. You do whatever you want with. You can go to the movies. You buy art supplies, and you go to SeaWorld. Second place will be $250, and the third place person will get a $50 Walmart gift certificate. So you can go to Walmart and get some fried chicken or more art supplies. All right? All right, let's look at our advisory board. This is an exciting part for any of you people at home on Zoom or anyone. Frederica Hall on our advisory board. We have an important piece, which we'll see in a minute, that she did. She is a long established artist. She's in Flagstaff. She is multi medium. Her typical painting probably sells for $10,000. So there is, there is money in this. You know, some people are like, oh, art. A lot of your parents and friends, and people are like, you're going to be an artist. <laughs> I mean, people are selling these things called NFTs. Look that up. <laughs> All right. So Frederica, again, she's multimedia too. So she does like haiku, she does paints, she does all these things. She's really worried about the environment and the way animals are treated. And my, one of my favorite pieces in our collection done by her reflects that. Let's look at the next slide. Andy Wilhelm, he is a teacher at Pratt in New York and at Cooper's Union in New York. Anyone heard of those schools? Famous art schools. So, and he also does art. This is some examples of his art, <clears throat> which is interesting. He likes to model things out of hard things to work with, like metals and ceramics and what? I think it was epoxies. Epoxies. Who even knows? All sorts. <laughs> All sorts of stuff. But, he, but again, he knows how to teach, and he knows the medium, and he's an artist. And also, by the way, a couple of years ago, he's so goofy, he rode his bike from Queens, New York, to Los Angeles. Bicycle. Come on. Not a motorcycle. No, it's bike, yeah. Bicycle. bicycle. Did I say motorcycle? No, but I just want to clarify. Can you imagine? Come on, we're almost to Missouri. All right, Harder. Next, next slide. Chris Aiken. Chris Aiken was an intelligence officer at Fort Huachuca. He was blown up in a blast furnace years ago and died and came back to life. His head swelled to this big. His ears were blown off. He writes books. He interviews famous artists <clears throat> in, in the music industry, mostly hard rock and heavy metal, crazy artists many of you have heard of. <clears throat> he also graduated in theology. So he graduated from college with a degree in theology, which is the study of religions. Again, ties into this. this Tom and Sandra Arai. <clears throat> Tom Arai has a small band called Slayer. I haven't heard of them. They're the toughest, most rugged band in the history of the world. And they've won Grammys and been nominated by Grammys. And he has performed in about 50 different countries at least, done thousands of shows. Um, he's now retired. Did that smart thing that bands don't do. Retire. <coughs> You're old, Mick Jagger, retire. So he actually did that. His wife is a world traveler and very interesting spiritual persons, and they live outside of Houston, so I try to have this advisory board all over the United States, and she will just beat you up with martial arts. She's like the highest degree of black belt that you can be. Serene Dominic, <clears throat> cute, cute guy. He is an entertainment writer. He has won the Entertainment Writer of the Year Award for the Phoenix Arizona Press Club probably six or seven times. He has written for publications all over the country. He's written books. And he's also an artist that does uh, paintings. He does music. This is one of his bands, one of his prison bands. And just a good 
art judge, a very huge supporter of the arts in Phoenix, Arizona, and a good friend of ours. Boom. Here we go. Here's Harriet. How many of us like the killer clowns from outer space? Anybody? Killer clowns from outer space? The big clown will be judging your art. He owns Art Car World. He started Art Car World. He is from Northern California. Um, grew up without electricity, basically. This was like one of the first hard cars ever made. It's on display at uh, Art Car World. And he's an also multi-medium artist. He designs stained glass. He performs. He does art cars. He has done all these different things. And he's, I believe, the most important art person in our area, if not Cochise County. Any killer clown from outer space? I'm going to mention that part. Go home and watch it if you haven't seen it. I think it's on HBO. Cheer up. It's on HBO. It's on HBO Max. Okay, next one here. Bill Zappa. Here's Bill at Disneyland. He makes crazy art. I probably have five or six of his art pieces. He does what's called found art, where he just finds stuff in the alley and goes, we should make this into art. So he took my Pez collection and made it last summer. He made him out of Tupperware. He's made me a fork and spoons. He's made me a... Christmas one. His daughter works for Disney, so he's here at Disneyland free again. He also writes books. He's got several books published and has had shows all over the country and has written even for the newspapers in the Los Angeles area about arts and all these things. He also can fix anything. Doorbells bro? Call Bill. Old typewriter? Call Bill. Old VHS player? Won't work. Bill will know what to do with it. All right. This is Stonehenge. Oh, here's his. This is one of his that we did together. One of my newest ones. And you can see they're all using the Pez. It's totally real. Light you gave up. them arms. And these are just some examples. made little arms. These are just some examples <laughs> of the art. This is Frederica's Hall thing. I talked about Frederica earlier, one of the advisory board people. This is her Animals of the Last Supper in masks. And these are all like fire porcelain. And this. It's the Judas in this one because it's a man who has betrayed all the animals in her eyes. Be anything. This one's dust. This woman is an accomplished art therapist, Joy Althus. She collects these ducks. She knew I was doing this, and I asked her to make me a nice art. She made me a beautiful multimedia painting and a uh, piece of art that's fantastic. And then she asked if she could submit this to the collection. This is neat to have those ducks. Did she win? Did she win? Yeah. No, she won. <laughs> this is, uh, the she was not in the competition. competition. This is our first competition. Oh. All these things are collected by me going to artists and saying, make this for me, in what they kind of call commissions, like a commission work. Or I bought it from someone, or stole it from someone's grandmother's attic, <laughs> or made it myself. This one is cereal icons. Because, you know, a story of a guy being betrayed by a friend and getting murdered the next day, being displayed by cereal icons, of course. I don't know if any of these were Jewish. <laughs> Maybe the frog. All right. Everyone likes clowns. This is McDonald's straws. This lights up, actually, these little lights going. This was made by some crazy people in China. Because, again, you know, Last Supper, we need clowns. Mm -hmm. This one is a calendar. This is an artist in Pennsylvania. This is just an oil painting that's almost this size. You can see it's the calendar, July, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. I asked him, why'd you do that, Amen? Why did you do that? And what are these symbols, like these things? <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for your attention to detail. This is a 60-something-year-old piece. I like this because you had to do it through here. I tried to take this apart. And go, you couldn't have done that through there. Yeah, you did. So just like the old ships in the bottle, you last supper in a bottle. I think it's the only one in, in the world. That's in a gallon milk jar. From what year? That's like 1965, I think that was. It's signed by the artist. 
I made this one. <laughs> Neural expense was put aside. Legos are expensive. Yeah. What the heck? I had really like two dollars here or something. This thing I bought the probably cost me a hundred dollars to buy this stuff. But anyway, I needed it. Yeah. Of course. If you ever have a lot of supper collection, you don't have Legos. <laughs> well, who, who, what are you really? Yeah. Piece of wood. This is from a wonderful place called Stone Mountain, Georgia. Anybody know Stone Mountain? Wonderful piece of art. It's the most racist piece of art and biggest piece of racist art ever made. It's bigger than Mount Rushmore. It's four of those jackass confederates on their horses, built by the same guy that made Mount Rushmore. This was carved while the guy's looking up at that, I guess, is inspiration, you know, why we're oppressing people. To make a log. Because, you know, Jesus loves oppression. Yeah. Another silly part. This is that Joy Altus that had the ducks. So she put this together in these words and symbols are very pushy against the Bible and stuff. Of course, she's an art therapist. And this is just about the size of this piece of art. So it's multimedia. These were cut out of magazines. Sorry, this picture's not better. I didn't know I was going to have this big fancy thing blown up like this. <laughs> and I didn't know if we were all going to be like hovered around this thing. <laughs> so that's an interesting piece of art. It's beautiful. I made this one. d -Din. There's always 13 people in the Last Supper, unless you're the Avengers, because there's so many of them. But apparently Jesus had 12 guys hanging out with him all the time. One might have been a woman. In a lot of these pieces, they tell me this is the woman is in here. Uh, Mary Magdalene, I think they call her. There's one missing here because he got blown up. There's only 12, there's not 13. So I made this for D-Day, 75th anniversary. And there you go. This one, because, again, who's the most popular cartoon or TV show of all time if you're going to have a Last Supper Museum? You need the Simpsons drinking. <laughs> this is Kevin Eastman. He's a nut. He came up with this thing called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's no joke here. Radioactive turtles that eat pizza and fight each other. Probably never heard of it. But for old people, they like it. He signed this for us and put this together. But this is what your art will be. Your art will be next to all this art and in the same playing field. I'm just as good as Kevin Eastman. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is another one of Bill Zappos, the guy from Disneyland in Burbank. He made this years ago. This is just about the size of this. These are all old Tupperwares, and inside them he even made the corn. So it's like wooden corn, wooden peas, wooden piece of pizza. These are shower curtain rings. I don't know. This is another one of his. I like Bill a lot. He's my friend, too. So this, he took this thing. And he carved out the Jesus to make it a Santa. And then put this little reindeer in there, carved out. Some people would say this stuff's offensive. When I did my show at the gallery, and we had a story that you could look at the Last Supper Museum website, uh, the Herald did a nice article with several color pictures. And there was a couple smart mouth people from Sorry Vista that said you know, a thing about, wah, this is offensive. Meanwhile, the people that run the gallery, LDS people, no offense to them, so again, an odd art subject. Because art is really about confrontation. That's really what art is. You want your art to confront a person's senses and change their mind about something, maybe just make them like what you're doing. Because without confrontation, everything stays the same. We have a lame world. You don't, it doesn't mean you have to be mean and confront somebody with a BB gun, but confrontation at all times key to art. Hey, here's this one. Because, you know, yeah. if you're going to have a Last Supper, this is a, a medium called Gickley or Gickley. How do you pronounce it, Professor? Gickley? It's like a weird thing where they I'm take a picture right. and they take a canvas and they print it like it's a painting. Oh. So I have a bunch of these. I got Star Wars. I got this. I'm making a Godzilla one for myself right now. Okay, so that's just some of how there's no limit to your imagination. You're like, I'm making some up. I'm going to have 13 pine cones sitting around the log. That's it. All right. Comments or questions? Questions. Please, they can be pointed questions about my personal life. Yes, sir. You traveled the world a lot. Have you seen the real last stuff? Yes, sir. I have. 
Milan, Italy. Yeah. Doing a big rock show there. Told everybody I had a stomach ache. I actually have the key <laughs> to the Leonardo da Vinci Hotel. The big leather key ring thing, fop, with the key. It's and like 30 years old. Leonardo right? da Vinci. What? Like 30 years old. You're ah, it's quite years. older now. Okay. But anyway, when I was there doing a rock show, I snuck away and went to that because Milan is a big fashion and art center. A lot of art, a lot of fashion, a lot of old museums. So I, I threatened to steal the key, and they gave it to me. But yes, I have been to Milan to see it. It's not the most spectacular Last Supper you can see. Well, when I saw it, they were, they were restoring it. Probably always on there. Yeah. You know, again, it was bombed. Yeah. One day it was just bombed, you know. And, and it was a miracle that that wall survived. You know, staying around it. Jesus was protected. Yeah. Oh, here come the Nazis. We're going to protect this wall. <laughs> Question? Come on. One hard one. Enrolled students can do it. What? Enrolled students. Yeah. Like, if they have a friend. Well, if you have a friend, you know, that is enrolled in the school, my only rule is you should be in good standing at the college. You shouldn't have to be an art student because you might want to be art might be your hobby next to history being your major. So you could show this to any friends or anyone. I just would want you to be in some good standing with the school. So I know you're not out just messing your life up, drugs and alcohol and smoking, watching Netflix all the time, you're doing something. Question, comment, tattoo, you can get a Last Supper tattoo. <laughs> and, they, and they take a picture of that. I actually have a Last Supper of Frogs tattoo on this big man. He was like that big. Hey, I'm going to get a tattoo. Frogs. <laughs> on his back. So that, that's really it. I just like, again, share this as much as you can. If you have any questions, and again, I'm going to hand out my cards. Did everybody get a sticker that wants one? Did y'all want a sticker? And if you have little brothers and sisters that like aliens and ghosts and stuff, <laughs> there's little kids too. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. When is the due date again? March 31st. And then where, where are we submitting these to? You're going to tell me. Oh. I'm thinking this corner. How about this corner right here? You know, uh, if we I'm have. Maybe come to my office. I don't want to. I don't want to approach on ceramics. So <laughs> bring them to me and I'll find a space. Because what we're going to end up doing too, when we are, uh, after they're submitted, they'll be uh, displayed out here in the lobby. So I have some paintings from my painting students out there right now. And so they'll be installed out there. Um, so you'll be able to see all the submissions from both um, Coaches College, uh, Douglas High School, and I believe Disney High School too. I mean, um, um, right now we're focusing on you guys and see how that works out, and then we'll go from there. So. Mahalo, you know Mahalo. Yeah, she, she's sorry, she's waiting on me to get done here. Oh, okay. <laughs> So March 31st, you guys have a good chunk of time for that. Um, all of these kind of places in Douglas, I'll make sure that they're on your Moodle page. So some of the places mentioned Art Car World, right? The Douglas Art Gallery, if you haven't been there either, it's right next to the post office. They have a lot of good shows. They have a reception coming up actually on the 12th, I believe. Um, and it's all about uh, their photographs, um, surrounding kind of Douglas and just different uh, Oh, the love stuff, right? Yes, yes. 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 I was trying to remember. And so, uh, it's a thousand uh, years of love. There you go. At the gallery, Ginny Jordan is putting that together, who also runs the Fate Wall of Faces Museum in the Gadsden. So oh, she's the one doing that. And all, I mean, there's, there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of art happening in Douglas. Uh, there's also the Oral History Project, the Douglas Oral History Project. There's a lot going on with Douglas Historical Society. Um, so if you're in my class, I'll post like an additional information thing on Moodle so you can click those links. The Last Supper Museum included in that too. Um, and if you have any questions, you can direct them at me or um, at Eric, right? You have his email now. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions moving forward, or if you're like, would this work? Let me know, ask me, ask Eric, ask Nikki. Um, they're all great resources. And we do have scholarships at Last Supper Museum. It's on the website, and you can talk direct to Nikki, too, if you want to talk to her, you know, if you don't want to talk to these guys. <laughs> so. but, I mean, this is a time to, to uh, 
maybe familiarize yourself just reaching out to a nutty organization. You might not have done that before. You can text me or email me all you want. I'll get back to you same day. Suits of armor, 13 full on solid steel suits of armor. You can do anything. A last Ed Paschke thing, which I really think you should look that artist up. Like he's like the, just great. He said he used to teach at Northwestern University. He was the emeritus there. And when a student came in that was a hot shot artist, he'd be like, I don't know, I'll think about it. And when some goofball came in, when I want to learn about art, I drew a picture once he more, we'd take them in. He was one of those, the proof of the student that gets to take his class. Well, the first thing he would always do was make stencils out of the lint trap in the dryer. So he'd take a little stencil of O.J. Simpson, that was like the first one he did, put it in the dryer and pull it out. Oh, look, take the stencil off, lint picture. <laughs> he had hundreds of them from students. He'd be like, look at my notebook with lint art. <laughs> so thank you guys for your time. Uh, I'm going to have you go ahead and get set up facing the model stand if you're in drawing one. There are some objects on there. That's what we're going to have a focus be today. Drawing two folks. I'll touch those. Just go in there. Advanced drawing. We'll talk. Um, if you're 